Tonight on CTV News, funeral arrangements have been set for a kindergartner who was killed on Tuesday. Then, with a split vote, City Council votes to bring more housing at the former site of Hughes Stadium. And how dating apps could be contributing to high-risk sex. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bella Roberts. We begin with an update from a tragic accident that happened Tuesday morning. That's right, Bella, and I'm Lauren Orcutt. Students of Lopez Elementary gathered last night to mourn the loss of their classmate Vale Michael Walkow, who was fatally struck by a car just outside of school. The six-year-old was walking across Wabash Street at 8.40 in the morning when he was hit by a crossover SUV driven by an unidentified 23-year-old. The driver of the vehicle is in police custody. Authorities do not believe speed, alcohol, and drugs were a contributing factor. In support of the family who attended the vigil, the school had moments of prayer as well as visual memorials for Vail made by his classmates. Vail is survived by his parents and three siblings. The Provost and Executive Vice President Rick Miranda is stepping down after 10 years of being in charge of the university's academics. Provost Miranda began his career at CSU in 1982 as an assistant professor in the mathematics department. He was named chair of mathematics in 1997 and the dean of the College of Natural Sciences in 2002. He was named interim provost in 2009 by Tony Frank and assumed the role fully in 2010. CSU President Joyce McConnell said, he has moved us forward in so many ways, leading dynamic curricular changes and academic technology advances that have led to demonstrable student success, even as we've grown our student body significantly. He's been with CSU through many challenges and helped us both weather those and achieve tremendous success along the way. CSU will be leading a national search for Miranda's replacement, after which he will return to a teaching and research role in the mathematics department. Colorado voters decided on several ballot measures on Tuesday night. Colorado voters rejected Proposition CC by about a 125,000 vote margin. The proposition would have allowed for education funding without having to raise taxes. Colorado voters, however, did pass a measure to legalize sports betting. This now allows Colorado residents to bet on college and professional sports. Colorado becomes the ninth state in the country to allow sports betting. The law takes effect May 1st of next year. That's right, Bella. Voters in Larimer County rejected a measure to raise sales tax to fund road projects in the county. The measure failed by just over 10,000 votes. Voters, however, did approve a mill levy in the Pooter School District, which is expected to raise about $18 million every year, which is planned to be used for raising teacher salaries and funding mental health resources in the district. Tobacco environment and the possibility of more construction at CSU were all discussed at last night's Associated Students of CSU Senate meeting. Reporter Allison Tackett has more. There was a lot happening last night at the AS-CSU meeting. There were two guest speakers. One speaker discussed why the no tobacco and vaping law is being enforced on campus. The reasoning is because secondhand smoke from burning tobacco products causes premature death among non-smokers, and even brief exposure can cause immediate harm. The other guest speaker discussed how there will be road construction going up around campus in the year 2020. The reasoning for this is because they want to add more roads that lead to campus for safer commuting between vehicles and pedestrians. Also during the meeting, the External Affairs Committee Chair, Lauren Flores, stepped down from her position. Following Flores stepping down, the Senate held an election for this position. Senators Savannah Overturf, Connor Cheadle, and Kyle Hill ran for this position. Overturf won with a 17-13-1 vote. Overturf says, I want to take my leadership knowledge and ability to help push the External Affairs Board into new heights. Allison Tackett, CTV, Channel 11. On the other resolutions that were passed last night, you can visit ASCSU.colostate.edu. 
City Hall was packed with community members Tuesday night who were there to discuss the zoning of the former Hughes Stadium site. The decision of the zoning could determine the number of homes built and if CSU will continue their contract with Leonard Homes to sell the property. While some people were in support, many were in opposition. Fort Collins community members gathered at City Hall where they shared personal experiences and the value of what the former Hughes Stadium site land means to them. And we have this beauty just on the edge of our city and we've had it for decades. So I came here tonight to listen to the community speak about the Hughes site and also to hear City Council weigh in on what their plans were for the future. I came to speak at City Council tonight to show my support for mixed density housing on the uh, Hughes Stadium plot. CSU was criticized for its lack of transparency with the community and the conflict of interest with its land grant and the homes to be built. Five acre mobile home park, it be affordable. <laughs> but it isn't gonna be, it isn't gonna happen that way. A city staffer noted the zoning cannot guarantee affordable housing. Many people were in favor of the land remaining open for the animals and environment. In a 4-3 to three vote, City Council voted to change the zone classification of the former Hughes Stadium site with the higher density plan suggested by staff. So it was interesting to hear the discussion and realize that apparently City Council was not convinced that this property is important to the community enough to say that they would agree with the community that it shouldn't be developed or it should be developed a lot less. Isabella Roberts, CTV 11 News. If you would like more information on the zoning decision, you can visit fcgov.com. Sexually transmitted diseases have been on the rise since 2014. Studies show that the number of people affected and untreated continues to increase. But could the culprit be swiping right? You can't live or leave without it. It's your phone. It has your social media, your pictures, and now even your love life. So, could the new generation of finding love online lead to unsafe sex and STDs? Some research suggests that apps like Tinder, Grindr, and Bumble are enablers of high-risk sex helping people meet and hook up easier than ever before. You know, everybody wants to put everything to the, to the best app, so what you end up having is uh, just an app that works for, for the way that millennials want to and the way it caters to them. But some health experts say that dating apps aren't to blame for people not having safe sex. What we're seeing is a bigger phenomenon of more people having sex maybe at earlier ages, more frequently, more partners, more open about the sexual behaviors they're engaging in. Although there may not be a direct correlation to the rise in STDs and dating apps, some say that apps that encourage casual hookups should be socially responsible. Should a company like Tinder uh, even be doing these ad campaigns where they're just, they're just really pushing the single life and the hookup and stuff like that? So if you're going to the internet to find love, it may be a good idea to find ways to stay safe too. If you're going to meet people on dating apps and you're willing to have sex with people you don't know very well, you have to be really open in terms of communication about testing, condom usage, and what things you're comfortable doing and not doing. You know, Bella, there are many ways to stay safe, and just one of those is getting tested. And that can be done just down the street at the CSU Health Center. People for Ethical Treatment of Animals, also known as PETA, has sent a cease and desist letter to the university asking that they stop deleting their comments on social media that criticize experiments on birds. Now, according to a press release, CSU hid or deleted posts by PETA and its supporters in September and October. These comments were specifically about Professor Gregory Ebel, who has been leading experiments on crows and how they are affected by the West Nile virus. PETA claims that this is a direct violation of their First Amendment rights to free speech. The university has yet to comment on this letter. We will bring you updates about this on Twitter at CTV11. Only one restaurant was deemed in excellent condition under the Larimer County Health Restaurant Inspections Report this month. Larimer County regularly does inspections, and recently the department has grown more concerned over violations that can actually lead to foodborne illnesses. 
Now, according to a recent report, the majority of restaurants fell into the fair condition category, whereas two were found unacceptable, those being Eric's New Asian Cafe in Berthet and the Stanley Hotel in Estes Park. You can find the full report at larimer.org forward slash food. Hey, Krista, so I know you actually have some good news about food. What's up? <laughs> yes, definitely. So speaking of food, did you two know that this past Tuesday was National Donut Day? I had no idea. I did not know, but I sure do love donuts. I love watching those little glaze videos on Instagram, so that's fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're definitely so satisfying and just so fun <laughs> to watch. So in honor of this holiday, I went out to one of Fort Collins' newest donut shops to see what they've got cooking. The Donut Club opened in January, and they have been working to serve their Fort Collins and national communities with a variety of unique donuts. We have two different businesses. Um, we have our Healthy Donuts, which is the dough bar, and we have our Gourmet Donuts, which is the Donut Club. The mission behind this family-owned business is to provide people with donuts that they can enjoy at any part of their day. Well, if you're looking at the dough bar, you really don't see a lot of protein donuts out there, but we really want to try and continue to share that product with folks who maybe haven't even had a donut in a decade. Um, as for the Donut Club donuts, those donuts are huge. They come with the donut bowl. We have really fun and creative flavors, and we try to be innovative and artistic with those as well. Although they initially created a storefront to sell donuts, the company is closing those doors and focusing on their online store. We are still really getting involved with the community um, in events, um, weddings, um, college graduations. So we're still kind of putting our footprint on Fort Collins, but a little more focused on the online aspect. It doesn't matter if you get the donuts in California, in Fort Collins, or order them online. The company is focused on creating tasty ideas for all times of the year. We, we really try to come up with fun and innovative flavors that are particular to the season. So with our Donut Club donuts, of course you have to have your pumpkin for the fall. Of course, we have to plan some fun Christmas donuts for that time of year. And Valentine's Day is huge for us because why would you want flowers that when you can have donuts? The Donut Club wants to make donuts accessible to everyone. It's great for parties or special occasions, or if you just want to order half a dozen and treat your roommates, go for it. It smelled so good when I walked into that kitchen. If you want to try out some of these donuts for yourself, you can order the protein donuts online at doughbardonuts.com or you can order the gourmet donuts at donutclub.com. Well, Rams, that's all the time that we have for tonight um, for news, so just stay tuned after the break and I will be right back to give you the lowdown on all things entertainment. 